Peterson, and today we're going to talk about Opener of the Way. Opener of the Way is a very unusual faction. In some ways, he's the uh, uh, most challenging of the factions to master, though once he is mastered, he's extremely horrible. He starts right off with a decision. He doesn't have a set place to begin on the map. Instead, his first choice is, after the other players have set up, he takes his gate and six cultists and places it anywhere on the map that doesn't already have a gate and eight cultists. So he has to choose if he wants to set up near the other players, over in a corner away from them, kind of intermediate. Most players kind of cut, break the difference down and like they're near some, not near others. So we'll just say it's North Atlantic for now. That's a pretty good central place. Good for moving around. <clears throat> okay, yes, that's his, this first decision he makes. Um, his faction ability is called Beyond One, and what it lets him do is if he has a unit that costs three or more power, he can move He can move it, let's, let's take this Abomination, he costs three, so your Abomination here, he can move the Abomination to anywhere on the map that doesn't have a gate, and he can take the gate in his area with him, this costs him one, and pop it down there. For example, here's an example of how he might want to misuse it. Let's say you have a gate here with the Yellow Signs gate. The Abomination can pick up that gate and move it here with the controller. In other words, you can do it even with gates that you don't own. So it's an extremely good way of moving around the map, reassorting things, kind of shifting around where gates are. <coughs> um, you can take an enemy gate and bring it to a place where you have a mass of monsters ready to wreak havoc on it or you know, various things. Now, uh, Beyond One is usually better early in the game when there's lots of areas to move your gates to. Later in the game, as the map gets more crowded, there's less choices about where to go and it's, and it's sometimes less optimum. But obviously it's always still useful. Now his units. He starts with the six cultists that everyone gets because, you know, that's how it is. Then, now his units also have an evolutionary path they follow, so we'll show that off. So there's the cultist. Looks like everyone else, except, you know, it's purple. Then the uh, next stage in his evolution is the mutant. Mutants cost two and have a combat of one. The, the Oxenoth is the only faction in the game that doesn't have a one-point monster. So that might seem like a disadvantage, but will, and it is actually in some ways, but in other ways it kind of works out for him, so we'll talk about that. Then we have the Abomination. This costs three, has a combat of two. Next step up from the mutant. Uh, then we move up to the spawn of the Oxenoth which costs four and has a combat of three. And if you look closely at it, it looks pretty alien, but it still has some Earth-like uh, features. It still has limbs. It's got like a, like a half-dissolved human face on the front. There's like, you can tell traces of it having once been from Earth. Then the final stage is, of course, the Oxithoth himself, who is lot, who's like a mass of bladders and roots and who knows what, and has no resemblance to anything on Earth. <clears throat> so those are the units you get. Now, the Oxithoth, <clears throat> is pretty easy to summon. To bring him on the map, you need to have <clears throat> a spawn of the Oxithoth somewhere. You don't need a gate or anything else. You don't have a spawn of the Oxithoth. You pay six power, take off the spawn, replace it with the Oxithoth. That's it. You got the Oxithoth in the game now. So uh, it's as if the, the, the spawn like evolved into the Oxithoth is the idea. So that's how you get him. Now, Yoxathoth's special ability is uh, pretty terrific, and if you look at him, you can kind of see that it looks like his base is a gate, and that's because he is a gate. Uh, he counts as a gate plus a great old one, so he provides two power for Gurian Gather Power. Uh, he gives you a doom point during the doom phase. If you do a ritual of annihilation, you get an extra doom fate point for his gate, and then you also get the Elder Sign because he's also a great old one. Now, two ways where he's different from a regular gate are you don't have to have a cultist be on top of him to move him around. He can be in the same area with another gate, and you can't move him with the Beyond One ability. However, he, counting as, as a three-point or more monster, can move a gate with Beyond One. Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about how he gets his spell books. The usually the first spell book he gets quite often in the first turn is eight gates exist on the map. You don't have to build them, you don't have to draw them, they just have to be there somewhere. Quite often this happens in the first turn. Not always, but quite often. The next spell book is 12 gates exist on the map. This takes a little longer. Often the, the game seems to hover at about 11 gates for a frustratingly long time for, for opener of the way, but eventually it gets built. And the worst case come, worst of all, you can build your own gates into it. And don't forget, Yogg counts as a gate, even for the purpose of these spell books. Okay. 
Next, you have to have units in at least two areas containing enemy controlled gates. Sorry, you have to have, yes, two areas of enemy controlled gates. So you have to move your units where their gates are, or you can, there's ways you can get units there without having to uh, uh, move there. Next is a really fun one. Uh, lose one of your own units in battle. So early in the game, you're declaring battle in some places, actually kind of hoping your guy will be killed, because once he's killed, you get a spell book. So you, you, you wreak havoc on them. Uh, losing the guy is actually good for you because you get a spell book. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, another kind of aggressive spell book is your great old one is in the same area as an enemy great old one. Obviously, it's safer if you try to do this with uh, King and Yellow than with Cthulhu, but however you do it, it gives you a, it gives you a spell book. You can often get multiple spell books at the same at, at the same time. You know, you can move Cthulhu into an area with an enemy gate, and, and that's your second area with an enemy gate. Then there's the great old one there, so you get the great old one thing. Then if you cut combat, one of your guys is killed, you get a third one. It's, uh, you can chain them together. Your final spell book is uh, Awaken the Oxithoth. Everyone has a spell book every time they awaken a great old one, so he does too. Okay, his spell books. His spell books are unlike other factions because most factions have a spell book for each one of their kinds of monsters, a couple just for their god, one for the cultists, and his don't. His are all more like generic. I mean, they affect his monsters, but they're not. He doesn't have like a spell book specifically for the mutants or specifically for the spawn. They all like. They kind of affect them all in this weird, uh, homogenous way. So uh, <clears throat> let's look at what his spell books do. So kind of his signature spell book is the million favored ones. This spell book uh, lets your monsters upgrade. Um, after a pill, after you have a fight and the pains and kills are all resolved, then you can promote your surviving monsters into the next step up. Cultists promote to mutants, mutants promote to abominations, abominations promote to spawns of Yoxothoth, and a spawn of Yoxothoth can promote by shattering and becoming as many mutants as you have in your pool. So it kind of cycles around. Let me give you an example of how this might work. Let's say that you are sitting here with your gate, not bothering anybody, and an enemy faction is pointed at this. Mm -hmm. Okay, comes in with slime molds. Uh, these are slime molds. Normally, they wouldn't see them on the uh, Earth map. They're really made for the Earth map, but I wanted to show them off, so they're cool. And they're working for the yellow can. You can yellow. So here's a, a yellow sign guy along with it. So he declares battle on your hapless uh, minions. Well. Um, let's say he kills one of your guys, and then the rest are, some are pain, some aren't. Well, you can take your units that were in the fight, and there's four of them, you have four mutants, you can replace them all with mutants. You don't have to, of course, you could place only some of them, but uh, there they are, they have four mutants. Then, you could declare combat in the next round, say, fighting his guys, one of your mutants is killed, um, his guys are pained out or killed, and now your three mutants upgrade to three abominations. Then you could fight again, upgrade two of the abominations to spawns of Yoxothoth, fight again, upgrade the remaining abomination to a spawn of Yoxothoth, and upgrade your spawn of Yoxothoth back to four mutants. And now, from having four cultists in the area, you've got a spawn of Yoxothoth, four mutants, you have a, like a pretty powerful combat force. Then these guys can begin the, tr the path back up, becoming abominations or whatever you want. So you can do quite a bit of, uh, actually, uh, quite a bit of, of tricks with this uh, upgrading effect. Um, one of the uh, results in the game is that a lot of times players won't want to move into an area where you have a bunch of cultists and attack them because you, like, this is suddenly can spawn a bunch of mutants for free for you. And that is, uh, to say the least, obnoxious. So that's the million favored ones. Next, <clears throat> the Oxidoth's only movement ability is uh, beyond one where he has to drag a gate along with him. But he does have They Break Through. They Break Through lets him summon um, a a monster at any gate, even if you don't control it. For example, here's a gate with a yellow sign guarded by his mighty uh, uh, slime molds. You can simply spend three power and plop an abomination down there. Presto. Then you could fight and level it up with a million favored ones, or not. But you can summon your monsters anywhere they have gates. Even an abandoned gate you can summon at. And then, for okay, you can chain this together with different abilities. For example, you can summon a monster there, then on your turn, next turn, you could use Beyond One to escape from the uh, the slime molds, have them kind of over here by yourself, then you can capture it, then since you have a monster there, you can summon, uh, recruit a cultist, and keep on going and making things worse and worse and worse. Um, so things can just keep going down the tubes for the enemy. Okay, <clears throat> next ability. 
channel power. This is their sole real combat ability. What it lets them do is re-roll any dice in the combat that missed. So he, after you, you roll your six dice or whatever you have, and you look at all the kills and pains, then you take the dice that didn't score a kill or a pain, you re-roll them for one power. And you can keep doing this multiple times if you keep getting crappy rolls. Of course, eventually you, you run out of power, but um, this, this, this reminds me that I forgot to mention what Yoxathoth's combat ability was, but it plays into this because Yoxathoth's combat ability is that he rolls two dice for each enemy great old one on the map. So the more, in, the more dangerous the environment, the tougher Yoxathoth becomes, which is kind of cool. And also, even if it's only more like six dice, that may not, may not be very much compared to Nyarlathotep or Shibnigarath or some of the other great old ones. But the fact that you can re-roll the misses kind of like increases your, your might a lot in combat. You tend to get a lot more hits than the dice that you roll are. And often people will be discouraged from fighting you if you simply, if, if they realize, always oh, going to re-roll the misses. And you never have a bad roll, or less, not as often as other players. You ever want to see someone roll a whole bunch of dice for an attack and then just get a crappy roll and not get anything good? But Yoxathoth, if that happens to him, he's like, yeah, I can re-roll a bunch of dice at once and, and you know, turn things around. So that's a, uh, an effective use. Okay, he also has a way of hitting you from a distance. This is called the Dread Curse of, Yaz of, uh, of Azathoth. Uh, you select any area on the map, <clears throat> and for each abomination and uh, spawn of Yoxas that you have on the map, here, here's two abominations, one spawn. So you, you roll one combat dice for each of those. So you, in this case, you roll three combat dice. You pick an area, you roll the three dice, and you apply the, kill, the roll as, well as kills and pains to the enemy factions in the area. If there's more than one faction, you divide up the kills and pains whoever you want. For example, you, if you rolled a, a kill and a pain, you could say, the kill is going on yellow and the pain is going on green. And then they, they have to take the hits. They choose, just like a regular combat, they choose what they're, who takes the hit. No, it's not a battle though, and no combat abilities apply. So they can't use, so like, star spawn can't regenerate, uh, uh, formless, uh, or other uh, flying polyps can't turn invisible. It's just like, it's just death from the sky hitting the area. There's a couple ways it can be used. If you see someone getting ready to attack you, you can hit them in the area where you are to kick some of them out of the area so they have to come back in. If you see a, an area where someone's alone, for example, let's say that you've just used your uh, abomination to carry off this gate, and um, you can't capture it because it's got a monster guard in it. You don't want to fight it because, hey, the monster might roll a six. And it, might, it happens. So instead, you use Dread Curse of Azathoth to hit the area, trying to get two kills or a kill and a pain or enough action so that they're driven off the, the gate, which is useful. So there it is, Dread Curse of Azathoth. Um, oh, also, when you pain people with Dread Curse of Azathoth, Unlike regular combat, you pick where they're pained to, so you can put them somewhere awkward. And they can even pain to areas where you have units in this case, because it's not a regular battle. You didn't, they didn't fight you, they were just like, something horrible was happening in the area, and uh, they ran away. Okay, now you have two very unique spellbooks that are potential game changers whenever they're used. One of these is Dragon Descending. The way it works is, once during the game, when you perform a Ritual of Annihilation, you get double the normal Doom Points. When you do this, you flip this spellbook face down, and you can never use it again. So it's only once. So for example, say that at the end of a turn you happen to have five or six gates, you're doing really well, then you can say, wow, this is the time, next turn, before people come in and take away my gates, I'm going to use uh, Dragon Descending, and instead of getting five extra uh, Doom Points for my for my ritual, I will get 10 extra doom points, and that can shoot you up into the lead from be even being behind. So, of course, you got to time it to the right moment. When is the best time for you to do it? It doesn't give you extra elder signs. It only gives you more doom points. But, of course, he's still useful because, you know, he's a gate. So that's dragon descending. Dra uh, so dragon descending is a way of, of suddenly rocketing up into a, a, a good position. Now, because Yoxathoth doesn't have any good way of gaining Elder Signs, except for the Ritual, it's really handy that he has this dragon descending to get the more doom points. And finally, there is dragon ascending. Once during the game, this is not an action, at any time, you set your power to be equal to the current power of one enemy faction. Then you flip this face down, and you can never use it again. So once in the game, some other faction has a lot of power, you don't pow. You copy them, 
and you've got it. You can use this a couple different ways. One is if you happen to have fallen behind because the mean bullies picked on you, then you can suddenly shoot up and get a whole bunch of power. Another way is if you just spent a lot of power, like say you did a ritual, then you summon Yox, so your power is really low, and the other players haven't gone yet, you can, and one of them has like 10 or 12 power, you can keep copy him, go back up from 2 or 3 up to 10 or 12, and now you're back in the game, plus you got, you got to pay for your expensive things. So I've seen it used both ways. And typically, Yoxodoth gets a minimum of six power this way. Often it's way more. I've seen him get 14 power. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty scary. So if you do it during, at the end of Gather Power, you could even turn yourself into a competitor for who goes first. And often the, uh, you, know, you can break ties and stuff. So it's a, it's a great ability. Uh, if you're planning to copy someone that simply happened to get a bunch of power, you may want to copy him before he does his first ritual of annihilation. That way, if he does it, you'll have more than him. So this, this can literally turn you around from being in the, it, behind to being in the lead. Uh, and so that's kind of Yoxodoth's thing. He's, he's very volatile. He's got to plan ahead for what he does. Um, when he uses uh, million favored ones, it might seem like it's an awesome way to take one monster and keep leveling it up. But, but really, it's not as good for one monster because it costs one power to level up a monster to make a monster that you know costs one more than the one. You could have just paid it in the first place and had the better monster. But, if you, but sometimes it's good to do that, but usually you want to get two or three monsters at once you're leveling up at once. And that way you really save the power and get the great monsters. That's Yogsathoth, a very eclectic and unusual faction, uh, not really like any of the other factions. Moving gates around, beam gates, level up with monsters appearing at your areas. So, but he's extremely fun to use. So there he is, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video.